All right, so welcome again, people, to the Military Guna TV, and thank you very much for joining me today. This is the Reggae Boy Watch episode five. Definitely speaking about Kevin Lambert, Kemal Roof, um, Jamal Low, Ivan Tony, the potential players to come in. Ivan Tony and also Johnson Clark are so people stay tuned, take out your popcorn, you're gonna enjoy this one. So the first person we're speaking about is actually Kevin Lambert playing at Phoenix Rising, and definitely it was a solid, superb performance from Kevin Lambert. I did enjoy that one. Very, very good performance. And uh, if you guys saw that goal from outside of the 18-yard box, something that we love very, very much. Um, but entertaining performance. Phoenix Rising winning the game, four goals to one. So the Phoenix Rising taking take um take on San Diego Royals and defeated them four goals to one in a dominant performance. And guess what? Kevin Lambert had a very very good performance inside of the midfield area in a double period. Um, it did provide defensive support, also also providing the attacking and um, potency of scoring a goal. So it was his first game for the USL Championship team, um, Phoenix Rising. So I'm going to go straight into his stats where you guys will enjoy this one. As you guys can see from the heat map, it wasn't much that dense, but it's just one game. So we're not expecting it to be um, over exuberance with redness because it's his first game. But as you guys can see, the location where you see the most density, it is telling you guys that he's playing a bit more deeper than the norm. So basically playing as a double pair um, support um, also with with Quinn. So but he did put, put in a solid solid performance. Um, so let's move into his stats as I know you guys are, are, um, are here for. Let's get into his stats. First game and he played a total of 90 minutes in the game. Well, it was really, really vital to the, prof to, the, to, the, to the team's performance. So 90 minutes played, um, he scored one goal in 90 minutes, which is really important for someone playing so deep. Um, shots per game, goal per game 1.0. That is obvious because that's just one game. Shots, he took two shots in the game. Um, shots, he had one on target, which was the one that hit the back of the net. Um, Really, really hard shot, hard and low over to the left side of the keeper. Keeper couldn't get down in time. Yes, it, it took a bit of deflection, but it was already going on target. Now, um, big chances missed. He did miss one single big chances. Now, let's move over to his passing stats, which I do think that a lot of people really, really like and love to talk about. Now, so he had 45 touches throughout the entire 90. Um, key passes, well, he didn't make any key passes. So accurate pass, um, he had 20 passes and completing the game with an 80% passing completion, which is very, very good. Accurate pass in his own half, he completed 12, um, completing the game at 86% with an 86% passing accuracy. Also accurate pass in the opposition half, 8.0 with um, at a 67% completion. Accurate long ball, 5.0, which is completing the game with a 71% accurate long ball completion. And I can tell you that is something that he has in his locker, has a golden um, ticket. He's very, very good at those long balls. Accurate chip passes, just he only made one and uh, completed it. Uh, made relatively, he made two and completed one of them um, at a 50% passing um, chip pass completion. Let's move over to the defensive stats where I see him doing a lot of defensive work. He made six interceptions, made five tackles, and made one clearance throughout the entire game, which are very, very good for his defensive stats. It shows that he has the potential to do a lot of defensive work. So he encountered a total of eight duels, completing them at 67%, encountering six ground duels, completing his ground duels at 75%, aerial duels, two aerial duels, completing at 50%. Now he made one foul, lost possession nine times, which is not that bad. And he was fouled just once. So definitely Kevin Lambert, an outstanding performance for the Phoenix Rising, defeating the San Diego Loyals, um, four goals to one, and Kevin Lambert contributing to that with a wonderful goal and also a immaculate defensive mid performance in that game. So next person we're going to move on to is Jamalo. Jamalo, as we all know, the best player at Swansea at the moment, the most informed player at Swansea at the moment, helped his team to solidify their spot in the championship um, playoffs moving to fight for the, the, the position, the one single position that is available in the Premier League. Now we already see that Norwich and also um, Watford are true to the Premier League. Now we have the playoffs consists of Brentford, Swansea, Bournemouth and also Barnsley. Barnsley is definitely a surprise package for that one. So we move over now to um, how Jamalo contributed to, how Jamalo contributed to this particular game against Derby winning the game two goals to one. So people would say that this is actually one of his quiet games, but for me, 
it, it definitely wasn't. Very, very commanding. Taking the ball, get it, they, taking the ball, getting into the danger area of the pitch and trying to create something, trying to make something happen. So he played a total of 90 minutes, no, no shots up, um, no goal, no assists, which is really, really weird for Jamalo, knowing the type of player that he is. Now he had no, he had no shot yet, he didn't take any shot. So definitely was a quiet game. Um, dribble attempt, he completed one dribble at 100% completion. He had 43 touches, made 17 passes, completed 17 passes out of 27 um, at a 67% pass completion, which is quite low. He attempted one cross and that it was successful. But guess what? In this game, he provided a lot of defensive support because the Derby team really, really tried to dominate the game. So um, he completed six out of seven ground duels. Um, aerial duels, he completed three out of six. He lost possession 12 times which is also high. I think that is quite high. He made three fouls and was fouled four times. Um, he was caught offside one, but definitely not the best performance, but one that it definitely shows that he has the potential. He did put in a good performance despite not having the best start. And also he did also fight to bring his team into the championship playoff. Now we're going to move on to the next player in particular, which is Kemar Roof. So Kemar Roof, man of the match. Celtic versus Rangers, the biggest derby in the Scottish Premier League. The biggest derby. Man of the match, Kemar Roof, Jamaican. Hmm. Can you understand that? But for this reggae boy watch, I believe that Kemar Roof is definitely the man of the reggae boy watch for me. Putting a stellar performance, performance, scoring two goals against Celtic. Two goals against Celtic. Rangers walking away with the league easily commanding the points tally, taking the, the trophy away as a Scottish championship team. And in this game in particular, Kemar Roof dominated the Celtic football club, scoring two goals, scoring a brace, a beautiful um, brace. But definitely, we're going to go into the stats to, to highlight how well he played and walk away with the Man of the Match award for this game. Also, adding insult to injury to Celtic football club, um, it's a Jamaican who decided that they're not having what Celtic is about and slap them around. So definitely, um, let's move into the start. Well, for, the first thing you guys would highlight is where you see the, the red intensity. That's in the 18 yard box. The man is a poacher, a fox in the box. Definitely a very, very, a very, very good performance from Kim Roof in this game, I would say. Um, he completed 86 minutes, scoring two goals. Three shots on target, one on target, one off target, and also one block. Scoring two goals from that. Now he had a total of 32 touches. Completed 17 out of 20 passes at an 85% pass completion throughout the 90 minutes of the game. Well, the 86 minutes that he played. He made two key passes, um, three long balls and only completed one. He encountered in five ground duels, only winning one of those, and four aerial duels, and he won three. So he lost possession six times, which is very good for him, especially for a striker, for an attacking player, to lose possession that minimal. He had one clearance and also was dribbled past twice. But definitely, this was his outstanding performance, as you guys can see. A solid, solid performance. Handshake from Gerard himself, a very, very good performance. And I really, really enjoy that. Please, guys, go and rewatch that game. If you don't want to rewatch it, go and check out the highlights. Look at those goals that he scored. Definitely. So let's move over now to the next person that we want to talk about, which is um, the potential Jamaican player to come in. The potential. Let's cross our fingers. Ivan Tony, and then now we'll move on to Johnson Clark Art. Ivan Tony equaling the, the championship goal scoring record. He's now one away from breaking that goal scoring record, which was set me. Was, that could be since World War One, possible. But anyways, he has now equal the goal scoring record from the, for the championship, uh, for any championship player. And now we want to see him smash that record. Score two more goals in his last two appearances. Is it? I think so. But definitely, um, he won the championship. He won the championship play of the year award, which is a big deal. A very very big deal for a young player at his age and someone in his career line. I do think that he's now he's going to move on from Brentford, but let's see how that one goes. He's been heavily linked with Arsenal Football Club, and I think that is one that might get over the line. But we'll see about that. Let's go over now to his stats and let's highlight how well he played. So he scored. He played a total of 74 minutes. He scored one goal, which was a penalty, sealing his team position in the Championship playoffs. Big, big deal. He had two shots on target and two one shot block, which completed the three shots that he take separate 
aside from the, 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 the shot that he had for the penalty. Now he made four jumps attempt completing two. He won and he also won the penalty that he, he scored. He had 29 touches, completing 11 passes out of 14, finishing the game at a 79% passing accuracy with two key passes. He encountered nine ground duels, nine people, nine ground duels, completing six of those, and also two aerial duels, only completing one of them. That is really, really good, fairly good. Lost possession eight times and was fouled three times. He was caught outside three times, but he's someone who loves to get in behind the defense and to create problems and havoc for the defenders. So solid performance, he made one tackle, was dribble past one and also one interception. Solid, solid performance from Ivan Tony, leveling the championship record. And I do think that he will break it. I strongly do think that because he's wearing the Jamaican colors. I think he will be wearing Jamaican colors, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. But definitely something that we have to look on. So thank you very much. That is it for Ivan Tony, solid performance, bringing his team into the playoff, um, solidifying, solidifying the team's position in the table and let's see how well they do on that one now let's move over to the final player the one that we want to talk about which is none other than johnson clark harris so johnson clark harris people come on this is a name that has been ringing bell all over the english league one um right now definitely heavily linked with the rangers football club and we'll see how that one goes it was petersborough versus lincoln and the game finished 3 3 where john clark harris scored two goals um a, a free kick a stunning free kick and also a, a penalty definitely set piece specialist and it proved to be that he's one of those quality type of player that can give you a variety not not only goal poaching but a variety of goals in his locker but he, he has now solidified his team into the championship now let's see how well they will do moving on from there but let's move on over now to johnson um clark harris let's see what he has to offer in this game in particular for this reggae boy watch he's, he has been solid and as i said he also received the play of the year trophy award for the play of the season for league one a significant landmark for the young player um definitely we can see how well he does he wants to play for the reggae boys let's see if we can get that one over the line and a solid performance once again from john c clark harris he has been he has been doing this throughout the entire season now let's move over into his stats so he played a total of 90 minutes two goals as we all said he had three shots on target three shots off target six shots he has a high high shot taking on um, percentile which is very very good i believe he had he attempted three dribbles completing two of them um one was um one um chance big chance miss also hit the woodwork once as well he had he had 48 touches in total he attempted 11 he attempted 29 passes completing only 11 of them that is really really low people completing the game at 38 pass accuracy so literally the free kick and the penalty bolster stats a bit let's be honest but he did had a good performance despite um his passing so this his movement and you can't look past the goals that he scored he made three key passes out of those 11 completed passes so that is what i'm talking about despite his passing accuracy is quite low he still completed three key passes in those 11 um, passes he counted in 12 ground duels within four of them but for a striker to encounter in 12 ground duels it means that he's doing a lot of work he's getting into those dangerous um tackles and trying to win those balls he encountered in 23 ground ground what this one is working <laughs> so 12 ground duels and winning four of them encountered in 23 aerial duels and winning 14 of them so can you imagine that's a total of 39 group um duels encountered in one single game 39 duels yes the win percentage is not a lot but for a striker to encounter in 39 duels what more can i say what more can i say he lost possession quite significantly um, 23 times and also was four four times he, uh, he also committed four falls well if you get in, involved in so much ground duels also aerial duels it's mandatory that you will um at least fall a few uh, committed a few falls in that so he, he was for also fall twice and he was dribbled past only once he had two clearances and also one block shot but a stellar performance a solid solid performance from Kemal Roof and also Jesse Clark Harris and definitely also Ivan Tony so these guys really stood out they stand out for this reggae boy watch and they are the type of players that we can say 
we want in the reggae boy team and we are going to see how well we do with them so people thank you very much for tuning in a beautiful um, reggae boy watch for you today and this is episode five definitely hopefully you guys enjoyed military guna tv and i am out